Welcome to the very first class on Python and regular expressions. This is going to be a four part series where we get into a topic that can be confusing, but it doesn't have to be. In this first class, we will go into an introduction as to what regular expressions are and how to use them with Python with some very simple examples just to get our feet wet. What are regular expressions? Regular expressions, or regex, or re, is a powerful tool that processes text. Regex is like a mini programming language that allows you to describe and parse text. It's not exclusive to Python, but Python does have a module that we can use to make use of regular expressions. Regex can move, isolate, add, substitute, text, split a string, and more. The definition from the Python Software Foundation is as follows. Regular expressions called REs or REs or regexes or regex patterns are essentially a tiny, highly specialized programming language embedded inside Python and made available through the RE module or the RE module. I give you the link, a very useful link, how to get started with regular expressions if you're interested. Why do you even care about regular expressions. Why should you even spend your time learning about them? So before we begin, let's give some practical applications for using regular expressions. Here's just a short list. There are certainly more than this. If you need to extract just the name and handle of an email address from a text file or a CSV file, to find double words despite capitalization differences, to list all files of a particular type from a given directory on a share somewhere, to replace one word with another inside a file, to extract three-digit numbers only from a paragraph of text. You have a long list of software product names and product IDs, and you wish to extract into a list just the product IDs, and so on and so on and so forth, limited only by your imagination and your command of how to use regular expressions and the Python language. So how do we get regular expressions to work with Python? To make use of regular expressions with the Python programming language, you must import the RE or RE module as follows. And I'm showing it to you here two different ways. One is from within a file or with from within a script, import RE. Or if you're using Python Interactive or the Python command line, you would want to do the same, import RE. The RE or RE module is used to perform regular expression pattern matching and replacement in strings. Okay, so now we are going to actually start to learn about regex itself. Important, the first thing to recognize when using regular expressions is that everything is essentially a character. And when we are writing patterns to match a specific sequence of characters, also known as a string, characters include letters, but digits as well. Most characters will simply match themselves. Take, for example, if we want to find the word Python in the string below using the Python Interactive console. We would do something like this. First, we import RE, or the RE module. Then we have our string called string1, and it says, I love Python. Then we have our pattern. We assign that to the variable P. P equals re.compile. Then we use this character R. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we have, in quotes, Python. So we're looking to match Python against the string, I love Python. So we take one more step to say Python. We use the find all method. We'll learn about that as well. Find all, and then we pass it the argument string one. So what returns, just as you would expect, Python, because we're looking to match just those characters that make up the word. We can even do the same as we did above, but ignore the case. Python makes provisions for that. So we can use the ignore case or re.i in our compile statement. Right? So after we pass it what we want it to match on, comma, re.ignore, or the same thing will work, re.i. Either one will work. So you see here, it does exactly the same thing. We find the word Python that uses an uppercase P or a lowercase P, it doesn't matter. So you see the results are the same. So let's make sure we have a really good foundation here. Let's go through this very slowly again to make sure we understand exactly what's happening. So number one, we import the Python regular expression module RE, or RE. That's the first line of code. The second line of code is the string we wish to search on, 
for our specific pattern. That's the thing we're going to look in. It could be a file, it could be a string, it could be any object that we could traverse. Then the third line of code is the pattern we wish to find within our string. So that's the thing we're trying to match. And then the fourth line of code takes our pattern and tries to find all the occurrences of it against our string. Note, P represents the pattern. Then we take the pattern P and use it in conjunction with the find all method, passing it our string to search on. Let's talk about a few of these things. What is re.compile? The re module provides an interface to the regular expression engine, allowing you to compile regular expressions into objects and then perform matches with them. Regular expressions are compiled into pattern objects, which have methods for various operations such as searching for pattern matches or performing string substitutions, which we will see in a later class. What does the R mean? I promised you before we'd get to that, so here we are. When writing regular expressions in Python, it's recommended that you use raw strings instead of regular Python strings. Raw strings begin with a special prefix R and signal to Python not to interpret backslashes and special meta characters in the string, allowing you to pass them through directly to the regular expression engine. And what is the find all method? I believe it's in the second or third class we're going to talk about all these different methods that we can use. This allows you to find all substring methods where the rematches and return them as a list. In the Python regular expression module, there are several methods to choose from. We're going to explore them all through this series. Now let's get back to characters. We have already seen regular characters, for instance, the letters that make up the word Python. We will now speak about what's known as meta characters. Meta characters don't match themselves. Instead, they impact the regular expression in different ways depending upon which meta character you're speaking about. Here is an entire list of meta characters that we may use. The square bracket meta characters are the first one that we'll talk about. They're used for specifying a character class. A character class is a set of characters that you wish to match. So let's introduce the match method to use in this particular case. The match method determines if the regular expression matches at the beginning of a string. This will match any one of the characters in the character class. So we'll look at the first example here. P equals re.compile R and then in square brackets, A, B, C within our quotes. Then we use the match method, M equals P dot match. So we take P, which is the regular expression, and we match against our string, which is A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. So when we fire off M, we see that we match just the A, right? Because again, this is going to match any one of those characters that it sees at the beginning of a string. Then we can move to the right. P equals re.compile R in square brackets A dash C. So this is matching any characters between A and including C. So A, B, or C. Same thing in essence, right? Just written differently. So M equals match A, B, S. And in this particular case, same thing, it matches the A. Now let's look at our last example. P equals recompile R, A, B, C. Now we want to match C, B, A, and when we match there, we're going to not match A this time because the first letter that we see in the string is C, and that's indeed what we match. So the search pattern here is a class of letters shown in the square brackets written in two different ways, but they mean the same thing, A, B, C, or A dash C. The string we want to match is different in all three examples. The pattern will match only if either A or B or C is found at the beginning of the string we wish to match on. And in all cases shown above, the condition is met. So in all cases, it returns a match and tells us which letter has met the condition. Two times, it's an A, and once, the last time, it's a C. Let's talk about the differences in using meta characters inside a class or outside a class. Meta characters are not active inside classes. So in, inside those two square brackets, the question mark in the first line of code 
does not represent the question mark meta character. It becomes a regular old character. So let's look at the code. Pattern equals re.compile AMT question mark in a class. So the second line of code is M equals pattern dot match. So the string we want to match is question mark one, two, three, four. And when we fire off the M, we get the match of the question mark. Because again, it isn't the meta character. It's like any old character inside a class. Let's reinforce this topic of meta characters inside and outside a class just a bit more here to really drive this home. So we see up top here in our first code snippet, pattern equals re.compile AMT question mark inside a class and then a question mark outside the class. So inside the class, the question mark is a regular old question mark. Outside of the class, it now goes back to being a meta character and means match zero or one repetitions of either A, M, T, or question mark. So you see the pattern we want to match on or the string we want to match on is A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 question mark. So of course when we fire off our M variable, we see that we're matching on the very first one that it sees, which is A. Now in our second example, we have AMT question mark within the class, within our square brackets, followed by the plus sign. And then it's the same string that we're trying to match on, and there it matches AAA. So what's the difference? Here inside the character class, everything from the previous example stays the same. However, outside the class, we use the plus meta character instead of the question mark, and the plus means match one or more repetitions rather than zero or one repetitions. You see the difference? of any character inside the class. So you see it matches all three A's. If we had 10 A's, it would have grabbed them all. What I have on this slide is just some helpful regex definitions, some of the more famous ones. I certainly encourage you to look for cheat sheets. There's so many of them out there and to review the Python documentation as well to see what is Python specific because there certainly is stuff that is specific to Python and not just regular expressions, you'll find that. So that takes care of class number one. There are three more, and we get more complex and more involved and exposed to more objects and more methods and just a lot more fun as we go into the rest of these classes. So I hope you'll stay with us. Thank you so much and leave any comments or questions that you may have and I'll do my best to answer them all in a timely fashion. Thank you.